So welcome to this video. I thought uh, in these lockdown times I'd come out and uh, do some videoing out in the garden today. Bit of a different backdrop. Um, and I thought I'd talk about camera bags. They're one of those topics that um, all photographers get into. I've had more camera bags than I've had cameras and lenses put together. Um, and I've gone through shoulder bags, holsters, um, slings, and more recently I've focused in on backpacks because as I showed in my video when we went to Greece, when I'm traveling, I tend to carry, um, if I've got two bodies, a couple of lenses, plus my laptop, etc. It comes up to about 10 to 12 kilos. And therefore carrying it is really important to get it on your back and be comfortable and so you don't injure yourself when you're carrying that kind of load, particularly when um, airports, you know, you can be walking quite a long distance to get to the gate. Now, when it comes to backpacks, I've tried various styles. I've tried outdoor styles, I've tried urban chic type styles, and I've tried travel styles of backpacks. Most recently, I've focused in, I've had a couple of um, bags that I've quite liked. Um, the first one is the Think Tank Airport Essentials. Um, it's a great camera focus bag. Um, it fits well on, a, on most aircraft. It fits under the seat in front of you. It's thin enough, it works with a mirrorless um, set of kit that I've got um, but it is very camera focused it's not so great at carrying other things like you do when you're traveling perhaps a jacket perhaps a book um, the chargers that go with phones um, so whilst it's really good it's really comfortable it's got a really nice thick interchangeable waist strap and the straps are really comfortable it's great for traveling with camera gear but perhaps less so with other gear and then when you get to the location it's still quite a big bag to be carrying around the second bags I've been trying are Peak Design bags and their Everyday Backpack version 1. I started off with the 30 litre because I thought at the time I had my D850 so I needed something slightly larger. Um, but it is quite a big bag, it's quite wide and it's quite thick and therefore it's quite bulky on an aircraft so it didn't really work as well. So I tried their 20 litre um, backpack which actually is a 12 litre backpack that when you expand it becomes a 20 litre backpack and due to the shape it's great with mirrorless cameras but it's not so great for carrying um, A4 shaped things. The slide pocket down the back is great but it intrudes into the camera element of the bag. Um, so I found it quite constraining, a lot of good points to it and these straps weren't as comfortable as I perhaps thought they would be. Um, so whilst it's been uh, the Peak Design bags have been good and I've been using them for a couple of years. Um, I've been looking for something that was perhaps a bit different, a bit more tailored. But as with all things um, in, in this space, it's a real trade-off. And I've got three categories that I was really considering when I was looking at bags. The first one is comfort. Um, as I say, I'm carrying a fairly heavy set of kit when I'm traveling. The second one is it being a hybrid nature. So I want it to carry my camera gear and also other gear such as a jacket when you're traveling, if you want to take off a down jacket and put it in the bag. Um, I wanted it to be able to cope with both camera and other gear. And thirdly, I wanted it to be carry on um, capable. So being able to take it on aircraft may seem a bit odd right now in lockdown, but um, it's quite important. You don't want to have to check in a bag. You don't want it to look too big when you get to check in that they start to question it. Um, so it's a real trade-off between those three things, comfort, the hybrid nature, and then also the carry-on size. So this is the Atlas Athlete um, pack. This has got a capacity of between 20 and 40 litres. As I say, I've got a number of packs between sort of 12 litres and 30 litres, so this fitted my requirement. They also do a slightly larger version called the Adventure, um, which has up to, I think, 50 litres in capacity. A bit large for my requirements. Um, this is the black version, as you can see. It also comes in grey and yellow, which is great camouflage for you outdoor exhibitionists. Um, and this is the medium size. Um, it comes in two sizes, medium and large. Um, and that's great because you can tailor it slightly to your torso size. So I'm shorter than five foot ten and therefore the medium is probably the best um, version for me. Um, it does have a, um, if you want to shrink it down a little bit more, there is a wire frame that goes around to make it hold its shape. And you can take that out and really cinch it down a bit more if you want to. Um, make it slightly smaller um, and 
being slightly tailored to your size is really great when it comes to comfort. As I said, these backpacks are really designed around outdoor um, use. And as you can see, the, the straps on this are well padded. They're more like you would find on a trekking backpack. They've got a suspension adjustment up here. So they're quite customizable to make it really comfortable how it sits on your back, depending on how much weight you're carrying, how much bulk you've got um, and your body form. Um, it's got a chest strap and the waistband is really good as well. The waistbands do come out. Um, they've got Velcro inside and they slide out or you can fold them back in. This one I've got here is um, got no padding and that's a travel um, waistband. And that was um, an optional extra that I purchased because sometimes when I'm traveling in an urban environment or on a plane, I want to be able to really fold the um, waistband flat or take it out very quickly. Um, the pack comes with a standard waistband which is much more padded as you can see um, and these again are tailored to your size so when you're ordering you can pick the size that fits you. So let's take a look at the um, camera compartment to start with. First thing you notice is that the ring pulls are really nice and big. They work well with gloves which is one of the challenges I've had with some of my other backpacks in that when I'm using them um, in the winter when I've got gloves on, it's really difficult to actually open the um, backpack. So as you can see, um, we've got uh, a, an area here, the ICU, which or is actually stitched in. And I think that's slightly better. I nearly bought a separate ICU to go in a hiking backpack and I'm glad I didn't because what, one of my concerns was it was quite difficult to get the camera gear out. Um, but because this is in, it's quite rigid it's got a lot of protection for your camera gear um, around the edges and it's got these really nice flexible soft um, dividers. They really are quite sticky, the Velcro on them, which is great because you can mould it around your camera. Um, I can stand my lenses like my 14 to 30 end on in here and they fit just flush at about 11 centimetres um, deep and your, my mirrorless, my Z6 and Z7 fit in um, with lenses on as well. One of the sales points of the Atlas um, backpacks is this origami divider. I've got it pulled out at the moment and that gives me a slightly smaller space in my camera gear and more space in the other side of the rucksack for other gear. Um, it's fairly easy if you, when I'm traveling, you push that in and you've got more space. As you can see, you can put some more dividers here for more camera gear. When you get to your location and you perhaps take out um, your camera you can pull this out with the handle here and it gives more space to the um, other side of the rucksack so really good flexibility there's lots of internal pockets um, so it works really well one of the things i do notice is on the large version of the backpack there is a zip around here so you can get into the other side of the rucksack from um, the camera side So as I said, there's about 10 litres of um, space for your camera gear um, built into this rucksack. And then on the other side, you've got this big flap on the top here, this big lid, and it's got pockets on the outside, it's got pockets on the inside, and then you've got this cinched area here. And on this side, depending on where you've got your origami divider, you can either have more space at the top here or more space in your camera um, ICU. But what you can do, the great thing about this rucksack is if you undo these cinches on the side here, then actually the space that you have increases from about 20 litres to um, about 40 litres. So there's a massive space in here and you'll see from other videos on um, YouTube that people have managed to get their sleeping bags, their tents, um, their pillows in here, as well as carrying their camera gear, which is the advantage for me being that uh, the second, um, second criteria that I was looking for was that hybrid nature. So I can expand one side um, to really carry as much as I'm ever gonna want to carry that isn't camera gear. 
Um, there is a space on one of the sides for a water bladder. One of the things that some people are saying is that, well, if, you, if you're carrying a litre or two litres of water, it makes the rucksack slightly lopsided. Well, if you're going to be carrying a, a tripod on the other side, it probably balances out, or you could put your water bladder in this pouch on the front, because there's no end of um, pockets on the, um, on the Atlas Athlete, which is great. There's also, as you might have noticed, on the side of the waistband here, there's a couple of pockets where actually you can fold these out and you've got a, either a drinks carrier or somewhere to put a lens if you're changing it and then they fold back in. So lots of little things that have been quite well thought through. Um, Equally, this isn't a waterproof bag, um, however, it's reasonably shower resistant, I believe. And at the bottom here, you've got a waterproof cover that just folds out and goes over the top. So all in all, a pretty well thought through backpack that I think will really fit with my requirements of comfort because the straps and the way it's built is really well thought through. The hybrid nature of 10 litres of camera gear with that origami insert and then this expandable um, normal rucksack element built in is really great. So I've got two bags in one there. And it is, um, the medium version is cabin compatible for aircraft. The large, I think, may be just slightly too long. Um, you may have to take the wire frame out to be able to um, get it into through the uh, baggage gauges at the airport or just uh, wing it. So it ticks all three boxes for me and my use case is that I'm going to be um, using it to carry all my camera gear with the origami um, insert pushed through so I have maximum camera, camera carrying capability when I'm traveling um, but equally there's a laptop insert inside the normal rucksack side so I can put my laptop in there with some of the cables in this side and then when I get to where I'm going I can take some of the gear out pull the origami um, insert through so I have a slightly smaller camera carrying capability and then I can cinch it right down to 20 litres and it's pretty discreet whether I'm in an urban environment or whether I'm just um, hiking for a day it becomes a day pack so that's how I'm hoping it will really mirror to my use case and my requirement. So are there any downsides to the Atlas Athlete Pack? Well, because it's a direct-to-market model that Atlas um, follow, um, you can't really have a, a play around with and a touch and a feel of, of the pack before you buy it. Um, and that could be a slight downside. However, the ability to talk to Alan and the team really does overcome that. It really does give you the confidence to make the purchase. Um, even though I'm here in the UK, I paid an extra $25 to have the expedited shipping. I purchased the pack on a Wednesday evening and the pack was in my hand before breakfast on the following Monday. So um, the shipping really isn't an issue. The one thing you do have to be aware of is that if you're, for example, here in the UK, um, the cost you pay for the pack to Atlas, you have to um, budget in an extra 25 to 30 percent to cover the VAT, the import duty and a FedEx charge for handling those. Um, so it doesn't make it the cheapest pack um, on the market, although it's pretty comparable when you look at some of the competitors to it. Um, but what I'm getting, the way I look at it, is I'm getting two packs here. I'm getting a really good camera pack that is really comfortable and protects my camera gear really well. But I'm also getting a day pack built into it. So it is that hybrid nature. Um, the other downside I found is that I was really unlucky. Um, the straps here are heat sealed at the end to seal the um, strap material and one of my straps here on the front came loose and started to fray and has lost about a centimetre. Um, I reached out to Alan and the team, they're really responsive um, and they've you know, shown me how to reseal it although now it's slightly shorter than the other one. It's a fairly minor localised thing, it did get me to be slightly concerned about the quality and I have had another good look at the pack and I think that this is a localised issue. Um, as I say you know being a director market, you can reach out, out directly to Alan and the team. Alan has offered to just replace the pack um, as it was a, a manufacturing issue. Um, so I don't think it's indicative of the quality of the overall pack and it's not worrying me unduly.
Um, so those really are the, the only two things that have come up so far. I'm really looking forward to being able to get this out into the field um, and, and giving it a really good use, getting it dirty. Um, but I think it's going to last me a fairly um, a longer than most packs I've had. And therefore, when you look at the cost and amortise it over a number of years um, and the amount of use it will get, it really isn't the upfront cost that you should look at. It's that per year cost amortised over what you're going to use it for and the cost and the value of the gear you're going to put inside it. So I'm pretty happy um, that uh, I've, I've got a pack that will work for me. As I said, this isn't a full review. I'll be doing a review after I've been using it for um, a few months or so, when I've really got to used to how I'm using it and how it fits with what I'm doing to give you a real world use case um, type review. So am I mad buying a new camera bag in the middle of lockdown? Well, maybe, maybe not. Um, this for me is an investment in the future. You know, we're going to be coming out of lockdown pretty soon. And I'm starting to think about what's my bucket lists and I'm going to be doing a few videos on what are my short term bucket lists for when we come out of lockdown focused here in the UK. Um, I've then got uh, further bucket lists for perhaps Europe and then worldwide. So I think this bag's going to get a fair bit of use over the coming years. Um, so I like to invest and I would have been buying this bag in a couple of months time, but I think it's great to invest in small innovative companies like Atlas and really help them innovate further. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It'd be great to hear what your thoughts are on your current camera bag or perhaps you've got a plan to, you know, what's your ideal camera bag? What are the trade-offs that you're making? What are your thoughts? Drop them in the comments below. I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell and you'll be notified of the, my bucket list videos and follow on videos from that. As always, you know, please do keep safe and I look forward to seeing you on a future video.